this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Golden Sun Dark Dawn. Let's continue through the Craggy Peak Ruins. And here we got a scale. It's just there to show you that Matthew weighs more than a statue on the other end of the scale. And yeah, we can take this guy out pretty quickly here. Now let's see if we can find a way to get through the rest of the dungeon and get up to the Kieran Mountains. Yeah, easy enough there with Flint. And, okay, so here you've got the four statues and the scale in the back there. And you need to get two of the statues on each end of the scale. On the left there, we got the large staircase. On the right, we've got the smaller staircase. So you've got to use that in order to go back and forth as you're getting these statues onto the platforms here. Now, all you got to do is just move a statue like onto part of the scale there and that'll be good enough. I mean, even though it's like on the edge there, you might think it's it would tilt over or something. No, nah, no, nah, it doesn't do that. You're good enough. You don't need to go, uh, what's it, pull them even further onto the scales there. Yeah, if you try to walk between the scales there, you get a little shock, but that doesn't uh, deal damage to you or, or anything like that. Okay, so get all the statues onto the scales there. Weigh it down. And that'll open up some more rooms around here. I think these are all, like, zodiac symbols or something. Like, there was, like, the water jug that was Aquarius. Then there was the lion's head that was Leo. The twins or Gemini. We were just, we're, the last one, what was it? Uh, there's like a, a picture of a woman, I think, uh, for Virgo. And then, yeah, the scales for Libra here. And you could go through these rooms, not in any order you want, but two at a time. Like here, I'm going through, well, that was like a picture of a ram or something. Uh, for Aries, you could go to the other room first if you wanted, but it's two at a time. Okay, so here we got a new enemy, Fairy. I hate that spelling, but they are weak to Jupiter. So let's use Vortex to get a gin kill on one of them. See, these guys can also put you to sleep, but I think we're, we'll be okay there. They don't get very much Experience. So if you're a bit further behind on your weapon mastery, you might want to just use your regular physical attacks instead of going for gin kills, but I think we're doing pretty good on the weapon mastery so far. We're almost done with all of my party members here. Okay, so here you got a ram in the back there. Guess what synergy you're supposed to use against it? If you say cold snap, I'm going to hit you. No, no, you use fireball on it. And when you do that, it causes that one to uh, disappear and toggles the position of the two next to it. So what you want to do is use fireballs on the goat, or rams, in the order in which I am doing that there. And then one more, that'll get all of them to disappear and then we're good to go. I'm surprised the gears around here still work in the ruins. I mean, it's been probably centuries since anyone's used this place. Or however long, uh, however long ago it was that alchemy was sealed up or whatever was going on. Fortunately, whenever you go through one of these rooms, they usually give you a quick way to get back out of there. Okay, so now we're going into Pisces there. And, okay, so with this one, we got that central platform there. You want to pull on that pole there, perpendicular to it, so you can swing it around the way you want to. So you can jump on the platforms or climb upstairs. We're going to see a few of those around here. How does that even work? Climb the rain. I don't know. But I do know that we do need to use the depth synergy on these fish so they don't 
dry out and die. So they can eat, I don't know, is that supposed to be a little fish on the chain there? Or whatever's going on? It's kind of hard to make out there, but yeah, just use douse on the two big fish there. And there we go. I'm surprised I'm getting into so many random battles here. I keep on saying that, but like, when I was doing my test runs, I didn't run into that many random battles. Let's see, there we got the crab and the scorpion clan. Is Yoga Junzo in there? No, no, that's another game, viewers. No one's gonna get that reference. But yeah, we wanna go through, uh, well, one of those two rooms first, whichever one's more convenient there. I think the crab is a little closer. Indeed it is! But yeah, you see here, we got... There's some platforms to the left there, and you're probably supposed to go around to the left to pull that over, but if you stand right here, you can just barely get within reach of that pole there, and then you don't have to go around to the left at all, so you can get through this room a little more quickly there. So we got a statue around here hiding a treasure! You're gonna see a couple of those too. And here we get the powerful Grievous Mace. Although I'm not gonna use it right now. But let's see, it's got some Venus elemental attacks on it, and it's got a lot of attack power. Unfortunately, it's a mace, and I've still got other weapons to work on, so I'm not gonna be using it. But it could be a good weapon for Matthew there. Okay, well, this isn't really much of a puzzle, but it's there. But yeah, the thing with maces is that... What is it? Like, the most powerful mace in the game is an ultra rare drop, and the second best one has, like, 126 or 125 attack power or something, when... I think pretty much every other weapon type gets something that's at least 160, if not 180 attack on it. So, yeah, maces really get shafted in the late game. So, I'm not going to bother with that weapon type at all. There's really no long-term benefit. But I could give it to Matthew if I wanted. Okay, so there you see we got a statue of the scorpion. And I guess that's supposed to be a knight there something or other, so remember that for about 20 seconds from now. Okay, let's see. Can I finish this in one round? Let's see. How's the agility looking? I think we can do it if I just use... Uh, what is that? If I use Vortex. There it is. Yeah. Use that on the Dirge there, and then Flint on the one on the right. Okay, well... I guess this battle will take a little longer then. Why not? Oh! Or... Not. I mean, I knew I was going to do that all along. Well, we're getting there. Almost done with those weapons. I'm almost surprised we haven't done more with that yet. Okay, so in this room, you see we got the Statue of the Knight and the Scorpion there. We need to get the Scorpion into that hole in the middle there. But before we do that, make sure to examine this statue to get the Vambrace. Not only does it have pretty good defense on it, it also boosts your attack a little bit. So that's pretty nice. So yeah, let's give that to Tyrell and hand down the Dragon Shield to Matthew there. Now the problem with this puzzle here with all these Zol blocks is that if you push the scorpion over that hole in the middle there, it'll just float over it and keep on going to the other wall there. So what you need to do is have the scorpion tile run into another one, stop, that'll give gravity a chance to work, and it's gonna fight its eternal foe. I'm not really sure why a knight would be an eternal foe for a scorpion, as opposed to 
anything else. I didn't know scorpions had mortal enemies, but okay. Let's see. Well, that would be a Taurus. That's my zodiac symbol. I think it's still my zodiac symbol, is it? Like, they changed that, like, at some point in time, didn't they? They, like, refigured all the zodiac dates or whatever it is. It's not like Final Fantasy Tactics or anything. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. At least I used to be a Taurus. Now I'm not so sure. Okay, so here, I don't have to pull this one around yet, but might as well do it. We're already here. And we need to do the same thing with the one on the right there. And you might notice on the left side there, hey, there's a little genie hanging up there. We'll collect that on the way out. For now, let's check out this last puzzle. Hornless! Hornless! We gotta give the goat, uh, or bull, uh, some horns there. So, yeah, let's uh, fill it up with water there. And then we use our coin snap synergy to give it some horns, or makeshift horns, or whatever's going on. And, let's see, I thought they were saying something about it burning in shame, or whatever it was, but now we don't need to use Fireball here at all. Kind of tripped me up the first time I played the game. Same thing with that scorpion puzzle. That one, I don't know why, that one gave me a bit of trouble there, because I didn't realize you couldn't just, like, drop it into that slot the way I did this time. Okay, so, let's see. We got the genie over there. Let's get the statue head or whatever that is to let it go. And then we can, well, collect the genie over there. Surely, it'll be grateful to us for setting it free. Or not. Okay, let's see. This guy cannot... Uh, run away so I'm not worried about uh, using brand on it that'll just seal away its synergy it'll last for a couple turns but long enough there and let's see I think I can get in yeah let's uh, reset that one maybe heal up a little bit get in a couple more hits there Hey, all right. Just in time, too. We're almost done with this place. Let's see, I think I can get in, like, one or two more hits with Karis. Maybe build up some more uh, weapon mastery for her before wrapping up business here. Although I probably could finish the battle right now. But I don't mind prolonging the execution. And let's see, okay, one more hit, and then, yeah, Flint will be good enough there. Maybe get in a little quick heal there with Amiti. And, okay, good, he didn't kill the guy. I want to get the Jin kill, both literally and figuratively. And for defeating the genie, we get one of my favorites in the game, Doldrum. Nice thing about this one is that it has initiative, and whenever you use it on an enemy, it's guaranteed to stop their first action for that turn there. And it's really, really good for utility if you're, like, fighting, like, a, a single boss or whoever. Most enemies will only have one action per round, but there's some enemies that have multiples, and in which case, Doldrum would only work on one of them at a time. And, yeah, I think we'll be good there. We're not quite done with Karis yet, are we? No. Got a little more to go, but we're almost there. And then I'll rearrange my setup to be more appropriate there. Okay, so let's see. We had Taurus there. What do we got next? Uh, let's see. Capricorn, I think that one is. And let's see. Same thing as before. We got the statue there, so let's get a treasure over there.
And what do we get for our prize? Whoa! A Mimic! And this one's a little more powerful than the one we met up with before. But let's see. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go with Planet Diver. All Mimics are going to be weak to Mars there. And then we can use Doldrum to prevent it from doing anything for the turn. Because it only has one round there. Hey, hey all right, already mastered. So, what was it with, uh, okay, yeah, we almost got the guy. I think one more, or one gen ought to get the job done there. And can I get in? Yeah, why don't you heal and you can regenerate some of our synergy there. See, I think the thing that I really love about Doldrum is that it always works, no matter what. There's no, like, luck resistance, or levels, or boss flag, or anything that can make it not work. Well, the only way it wouldn't work is if you, uh, what is it, had a preemptive strike and then you tried using it. It wouldn't do anything because they don't have a turn. But let's see, for defeating it, we get the Lure Cap, and that just increases the encounter rate, but I don't really care about that. Okay, so now, what I want to do is I want to give the Lava Genie to Karis there to split up my Mars Gen, because the next part we're going to be going to is going to have enemies that are weak to Mars, primarily. And I want to switch around our equipment a little bit. Unfortunately, uh, Amiti cannot equip the dress, but it had a good run there. So now, what I want to do is I want... Uh, what was that? Uh, Tyrell to be really fast because he's got the Arid Heat Synergy family. So he can hit like a bunch of enemies at once with that while the other party members can get the gin kills and things like that. And let's see. My equipment, I think it's good enough there. Yeah, I just kind of rotated around the body armor a little bit, but you can get rid of the sign and dress. That is weaker than all the other armor that we've got at this point. So, I had a good run, but I think it's time is through. Okay, here's another one that kind of tripped me up a bit the first time I played the game. What you gotta do is you gotta get all these statues into the different holes. You notice, like, this one is a square, the one up top is a triangle, the one on the left is a circle there. And whenever you push these statues around, it leaves a trail behind it. And with that, you can't move a statue over a tile that one of the other statues was pushed around in. So what you need to do is get the two lower statues into their holds while leaving the just enough space for the upper statue to go all the way around to get to the bottom there. But yeah, I, when I first played the game, I, I knew I had to do something like that, but for some reason I just couldn't wrap my head around the idea precisely how I was supposed to be moving these around. Don't worry about the, I don't know, what are those, horns or... Yeah, they're horns. It's Capricorn. I was going to say maybe they were wings. Kind of hard to tell. But, like, they, we had those angel statues before. And I guess I got a little confused with that. And... Okay, so, yeah. Now we're in the clear there. I'm trying to think of another game where there was something like this. Where you had those different shapes and you had to put stuff into them. Like that. Eh, whatever. I like how they have all these gears around here and stuff. Kind of like a clock tower. We need more clock towers in RPGs. Yeah, this one's chock full of them. With all these ancient machines and everything like that. But alright, we're done here. Then we go to the last one. Sagittarius, or... Sagittarius, or however you pronounce it, I don't know. Okay, so let's see. Well, only one way to go. 
to the left there, and let's see, just pull that one just a little bit to create a platform that we can walk over there. And, okay, well, this one's pretty simple. Now, if you recall, when we first got to, well, the outdoor part of the dungeon there, we saw there was that mirror with, it showed, a, well, not a reflection, but it showed a centaur in the mirror there. So what we need to do, freeze things up here, go to the other side, and then get the centaur to face itself, like the tablet there was saying. Uh-oh. You broke the whole place. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Well, actually, yeah. We uh, we did want to do that because, yeah, that, well, did something outside there. And we're done with our business inside the dungeon. We've been to all 12 of the rooms. So let's get out of here. Unfortunately, you cannot go back to the previous areas at this time. So, don't even bother. But now that we got that arrow through the pendulum there, just give it a good pull. And we've completed all the puzzles there. I'm not exactly sure what this is going to do, but we'll find out. That is one nice machine you got there, pal make all those platforms appear like that. Wish I could do that. One day, viewers. One day. But can we find a way to get through the peak of the Kirin Mountains? Find out next time on Let's Play Golden Sun Dark Dawn. This is Chi Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!